Hi teachers, this is Marcy. I wanted to give you just some tips on building basic lessons in Inspire. We've been giving you a series of web links to look at different individual skills and this is going to combine some of those individual skills into um, building one lesson. I'm going to aim this to a couple different grade levels, couple subject areas, but no matter what you teach you can probably gather some ideas about how to go about working on this. So. I'm going to pretend right now that maybe I'm doing some vocabulary. Um, I'm going to say I'm doing some vocabulary with my little kids. Um, teachers, I'm also going to show you that we found this summer that if you go to Google and you do Super Kids and you come to Images, some of your little Super Kids people are here. Um, you know the children in Super Kids much better than I do. But sometimes you can find pictures of some of your kids that you might want to use, um, the, the little people from Super Kids. You notice here it has a characters, so you might click on that and do view all images and see which of the Super Kids images you see that you could use. Um, I know, I'm pretty sure I recognize this little person. You may run into um, some images that are really tiny, like this 106 is pretty small. So I'd have to be pretty careful with that one. Um, but you could kind of look around and see which super kids you think you could use. The other option is to go back to the web. And we also figured out that if you went to the super kids website, sometimes there are images there on the super kids website that you could use. Um, and so you guys know your way around this far better than I do. But some of the websites allow you to come in and maybe grab images. So if you can find images of your people, like maybe, um, I don't know who this is, I'm going to hope she's Cam because I see the C. So I'm going to kind of come in and start looking. Again, you all may have access to some of the materials in here that would let you f find the pictures you want and pull those particular pictures. Um, I'm not as familiar with where things are here, so I'm going to have to trust in you guys to find them. But let's say you find an image that will work for you. Just a quick reminder that a lot of images, if you click and drag, depending on the website, and this one's not, but a lot of times you can click and drag images. So if I could find something in Google that went with my particular super kid, and maybe it would just be something as simple like that, I could do view image. Now this one's really small, so it's going to be pretty small. But I can bring it in here just by clicking and dragging. And so I could bring that image in and use that image. And I can make it a little bit bigger without totally losing it. Remember to use the corner with the uh, little hash in it to make things bigger. So I might do something like that. Um, I also might do something very simple. Let's say that I am teaching kids some basic vocab words and I might come into my resource browser and I go to my shared resources and I might say cat because I'm teaching little kids right now and I'm going to let it search. Remember it takes a moment to search. You're going to see the big red and white stop button while it's searching. If it doesn't find anything, you're going to see a little button that pops up saying it didn't find anything. If you find stuff, it'll pop up down here. And so I'm going to give it a moment to find some stuff. Hopefully it'll do that. While I'm waiting on the program to do that, we're going to kind of cheat and go do some other stuff at the same time. So again, I'm going to use that F3 key on my MacBook. And I'm going to click and come to Google. And I'm going to bring it right here. Ah, and see it's popping up behind me. But while I let that finish, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say frog because we're going to pretend that we want an image of a frog and at that point I could decide do I want the cute frog, do I want the kind of scary looking frog, the real frog, what kind of frog do I want. Um, I can click and drag. I would highly advise before you click and drag though click on the image you want. Now this one's going to be very large. 1200 by 1200 means that he's going to be um, background sized so I could do search by image as I talked about in an earlier one and I could do all sizes which will let me look at how many different sizes. 
When you're in this range, the 1300s, 1200s, even thousands, you're looking at the size of an image that is a background. So probably six, 700 is a good enough size for me. So I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna come over here to view image. So it takes me to the web page of just the image. And I'm gonna give that a moment to load. Be aware that I'm doing this from home. And so every now and then what happens to us is something won't load at school, you may get a warning. Or sometimes you get to one of these random sites that's not very good for finding a picture and dragging it over. So at that point, I would close out and I would come back and grab a different one. You may be able to look at sometimes the pages and see one that's a little more familiar. Let's see if this one will cooperate a little better. And that link was wrong, which does happen also. The fun of live web demos. Let's see what we can find. Obviously, he's kind of cute. Here's a perfect example. This one pops up as a Facebook.com. So if you were trying to do this from school, you would not be able to get through to that image. So at this point, I might just come back to images and say, this little froggy's not for me. And so I might change my image back to just frog, take out the JPEG, come back to images. And you know what? I'm thinking I'm going to go with a cutesy frog because he's probably going to be quicker to find at this point. So I'm going to do view images, and I can look through here, and I can say, hmm, which froggy do I like? He's pretty cute. Um, I can click on him. I can do view image, or I could have checked the size, depending on what I'm doing, and I can click and drag him out. So it will take a little while sometimes to sort through and find your different options. Again, I'm going to grab the angled hash, and I'm going to shrink him down. So I'm going to drop my frog into here. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pull Super Kids out the way. And so I'm going to look through and see what came up for cat. Notice anything with the letter C-A-T that included caterpillar and things like that comes up. And so I'm going to try and find the one I want. And those are big cats that even came up with Catholic. So you never quite know what you'll find. So I'm going to bring this little kitty cat here out. And then for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and search for a dog. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to kind of resize these images a little bit so that I can stack them here. And I'm just going to have a cat, a frog, and a dog. And dog and frog rhyme, so I might be able to talk about rhyming, what doesn't rhyme, and all that fun stuff. So there would be a couple of ways you could make a quick page with this for your class. You also could decide not to use that white background by simply grabbing a color. And I use the paint bucket, click on the color, and drop in the color. Now, that yellow is a bit bright, so maybe I want to change that yellow. If you right click on the background, of a, if you right click on any color, it's going to bring up things that will allow you to get other colors. So I might come to this color wheel, and it'll take it a moment to load, and I can come in here and I have lots and lots of shades of yellow that I can start to click through, and I can start to Try to find the one I want. And as you notice, it kind of gets lighter as you go. And so you can work through until it's a shade you're happy with. Um, if you're looking for primary colors, the easiest place to go is the coloring box. You also have different sliders that you can pick different colors from. And so you have different things. So you can pick different yellows and different colors on the spectrum. And when you're happy with the one you pick, just say OK and it would change this out, but I'm good right now. So we have some little doggies. Let's see what we got. Um, looking for which puppy I want. And um, This little guy's kind of cute, so I'm gonna bring out the little beagle. Notice this tool has stayed on. That's one of the common mistakes everybody makes in Promethean when you're using it. Remember the arrow will turn off any particular tool, and I'm gonna need to shrink this guy down a little bit. So I'm going to arrange my cat, my dog, and my frog. And the other thing I want to remind you of when you're building a page for the kids to interact with, if these pictures aren't going to move, the best thing you can do is lock them. Quickest way to lock all three is grab them with a click and a drag of a box. And I can come in here and I can click the yellow box so that they're grouped. And then I can click the little properties, the file, and I can do locked. And now, the kids can do whatever they want to this page. They cannot move these objects. They're stuck to the page. So now, 
I could come in and do this a couple of ways. I could do something like grabbing a shape and I could grab a rectangle and I could tell it that I want a white inside and a black edge on the box and I might thicken up my line a little bit and when I come out what I can do is just click and drag that's a ridiculously thick line so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to delete that I need to make that really thin obviously so I'm going to go to my shape tool I'm going to take this down a good bit again I'm going with the white inside this would be a clear inside and I'm going to go with the black edge I'm going to bring it out click and drag a box now if I did something like this I could make this a couple of ways I could make this a section where the kids have to either write in the box or put the word in the box so if I'm going to do that what I might do is get the box to the size I want once I'm happy with that if I have this click so that this marquee toolbar handle is up right here's one that shows two pieces of paper and if I click it duplicates it that way each one's the same size and I can click and I can drag these now if I'm going to use these boxes for the kids to either write in or to drag a word into again I'm going to click on this box come to this file this property browser bo uh, file box and lock it because I don't want the kids at this point to be able to move the box okay and I'm going to do locked now if I need to adjust something because it's off remember if I change this into orange design mode even though I've locked it I have the ability to quickly move rearrange set up my page exactly where I want it come back to here and when the kids use it in the blue mode at the bar is locked so here if the kids are able to handwrite they could grab the pen they can pick a color and if they're spelling this and pardon me I'm working on a keypad not a full mouse so they could say frog okay and it writes right over so I'm gonna just come on and erase this real quick by grabbing the eraser and take this out I also have the ability to throw in text if I hit text and I click and I come up to my properties I might want to make it big and I might do cat and then I'm gonna click out of that and I'm gonna click again to start a new box and I'm going to do dog and then I'm going to click out and I'm going to click again and I'm going to do frog now you can resize those do whatever you want you could simply drop these to the bottom and you could have the kids say here's a frog here's a dog and here's the cat and they could simply drag and drop you also another option is to take the words I'm going to unlock this very quickly and for now I'm just going to kind of stack these down here out of the way because I want to show you something with those again in a few minutes I'm going to come back to design mode if I bring these words here obviously I might not want them in that order I might want to rearrange some stuff but I could drop words here and I could lock the words in just like I locked a picture I'm not going to do that but I would for the kids and then I could have the kids come up click on the pin and simply draw a line to match I kept the boxes here to show you one thing that okay it's not gonna let me so let me ah sorry guys wrong page I'm going to get into this mode so that I can move these around for a minute one of the things that occasionally happens and I just want to show you how to address it is sometimes when you click a word and drag it over it's in the wrong spot meaning you will drag this word and it goes behind the box so if you click and drag it back out and you click on the properties one of the options you have on anything it can be a picture or a word when you click in the property browser is you have this button down here called reorder your Promethean page is divided into layers a top a middle and a bottom text writing those kind of things are usually defaulting to the top layer but when you have pictures especially sometimes they don't layer the way you expect them to if that's the case you could tell it to bring an item to the front you could send something all the way to the back bring it to the forward bring bring it to the forward excuse me bring forward brings it forward a level send backward as one level so if I had something that didn't move the way I expected it to like these see how they show up behind the box and let's pretend that's what I wanted to put in the box I could click on them now these are grouped so I'm going to ungroup it and now I'm going to click on Mr. Froggy notice the box is on him 
I'm going to click on his property and I'm going to say reorder and come here you and it's being a little cranky with me I'm going to say bring him to the front and that will stack him on top of anything else that's in another layer now, what I want you to know is that if you come to this one called the Object Browser, you can actually see your layers. So if you click on something, it will show you what's in the top layer, middle layer, bottom layer. Text is going to always come to middle. If I come with a pen, and I grab my pen, and I write on this screen, even if it's just a scribble, notice that that comes to the top layer. And I can delete that out simply by having it highlighted by clicking on it and hitting delete. Or I can come into here and I can say, oops, I didn't want that here. Let's say I want all my images to pop on top of the boxes. I could go image by image into this browser and reorder it. Or I could come here and click and drag it above the other items. And put it in a new layer. Anything that's automatically a background in Promethean will go into this background layer. Usually you're going to move things into the bottom layer. Um, most things don't default there, but you could move them there so that they're below. Something that you would always want to stay behind would be the only thing I would move into the bottom layer. While you're in this object browser, if you click on something, you also can double click and change between lock and unlocked here. So you could change it here if it's in orange design mode and it's already locked, or you could come to the object browser. Inspire is like a lot of programs where there's more than one way to do something. You also have a browser. If you click on an image, this property browser pops up here and you can rearrange. So any of these things are present for you to build. Now I'm going to come back to this page and I'm going to grab a fresh page because I showed you quite a few ways of mixing and matching and drawing. So let's say that I'm counting money. Let's take a math lesson for a minute. First of all, I would come back to this and I would search for money. And I would do a quick search. Now this might take a moment, but it's going to give you the chance to let it look and see what it's got. Now in the meantime, I might come and again grab my paint bucket, pick a color like, uh, let's go light this time. Once I pick a color, if I click with that paint bucket, it's going to fill my background. And it's still searching for money. Once we get the money, I'm going to show you a way to make things happen very easily for your kids. Because if I'm testing on money, one of the things I want to know as a teacher is that my kids actually got to the right amount without accidentally locking into it by dragging things. And it's still loading because as you see, there's a good bit of stuff in the money section. So I'm going to drag to money. Um, there's money for other than the United States, so you have to kind of dig through. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring out a dime. And I'm going to bring out the tail of it also because I know we have to work with the kids to make sure that they know both sides when we're teaching money. I'm not going to grab the half dollar at this moment. I'm going to grab a nickel and a penny and a quarter. Now, depending on what I'm doing with this lesson would decide what I'm dragging out. If I'm dragging out, if I want to teach them heads and tails of money, I might just have the heads and the tails and have them label what they are. So I might have some out with the word and I could do something like quarter. Oops. And I'm going to type off of that. I might want to do that more than once or even better I might just want the word quarter for them to show up as many times as possible there's a great little feature in here in this menu bar for properties that's called drag a copy and if you set something to drag a copy now you have to be in the blue mode for it to work once it's in that blue mode meaning at the board mode if I put my mouse here and I click and drag as many times as I drag out they're going to land on quarter. So if a kid comes up to the board and they think everything on this board is a quarter, they can drag out the word quarter as many times as they want. So I could do something simple like having the coins I want, heads and tails, having the different words down here, and then let them drag the answer. Now I want to point out that I have to go into that orange design mode to move this. 
but I could line these up. Obviously, I'd make them bigger if I was working on this. I'd have to click into that text box, highlight it, and I definitely want that to be bigger. Maybe not that big, but you get the idea. Rearrange it. And then when I click off and come back to this blue mode, it is still in drag mode. It still does drag a copy. Now, if I was teaching a lesson on money, and I had some coins out, but let me go grab a uh, went too far. So let me grab a few coins again. And I'm going to grab a nickel. And on some of them, I might grab just the tails just to mess with the kids, just to see what they know. Bring this out. I might not choose the one that says half dollar just as a way of seeing what they know. And I could pick through my coins, pick what I want. And once I have what I want out, I would just do this. And so I could put a coin group together. And I might mix and match them. What I might also do to the kids, a couple ways I could do this. I could either drag these to the bottom. I could make these say something like, or make these do the drag a copy that we talked about. So put them where I want. For each one, I'm going to do drag a copy. And I'm going to do drag a copy. And drag a copy. Drag a copy. And I'm going to do drag a copy. And so, now you notice each of these can drag a copy. So what I would probably do is grab my little text tool, type it up here, and while I'm ahead of myself, I might put a size in, and I can start typing. And I could say something like, make me a dollar five. And I could make an amount. And so I could come here, and I could tell the kids, all right, this is your coin box. Now make me a dollar five. If you wanted to get fancy, you could have taken the shape tool, made a rectangle that was clear on the inside and black border, and I could put that over this like that. What I'd also want to do is lock that in place so the kids can't move that box. Okay, and remember now I've got my drag of copies, I've got them sectioned off, and a child could come up here and say, all right, fine. How much is this? How much is this? They've got to actually take the coins up here for you as the teacher to see what is it they know and see is it right or wrong. Now, I'll show you another trick that can make your life a lot quicker. If I was doing this and I wanted to build quite a few pages that had this bottom part, I would get rid of this. I would come to my page builder. I would click on this little tool, either click in the corner or right click on it and I would say duplicate. And notice now I have two pages. So all I have to do is come here and throw in the amount I want the kids to make. And boom, I have a nice quick built lesson. And I can use that page as many times as I want. I can get fancy with color or I can just keep it simple and have them interacting with the page. Um, drag and drop is a great little tool. You could use it um, for one of the teachers was doing a few years ago place value and she didn't find a great chart in here and I actually built her one. Oh, um, hang on, I'm clicking the wrong spot guys. Let me wake up and do it in the right spot. Place value chart and so I'm gonna let it load and I'll kinda tell you about what we had. What we had set up for this teacher was just a grid and we made columns for like tens, hundreds, thousands, and we had tenths, hundreds, thousands. What would work great with that drag a copy is to put a zero, one, two, and each of your digits, zero through nine, at the bottom. Make those drag a copy. You could either put a number in words, or you could call out, give me nine tenths, and the child could come and they would have to actually grab digits and build it into a place value chart. That allows you the chance to see does this child really know what it is I'm asking for? Um, of course, it takes a moment for this to load. Again, the things it's loading first tend to be more images and graphics. Um, let's see if they've put anything better in. Those are voters. And so those are coming in first. Um, 
you see some different parts and of course lots of things teach place value so I'm kind of scrolling through quickly so there was this one grid and this one's hundreds and tens so whoops I still have my text tool so let me click off so you could take a grid like this size it the way you want it again I would highly advise that you come in and lock this grid otherwise they're going to be dragging it all over the place the other thing I really, really might do to make this a little easier to read and user-friendly in my class, in your shape tools, I can't draw a straight line even if I had the mouse in my hand, but there's a great little tool here with a line, and I can make it black or I can make it red or what I can make it whatever color I want. And you notice that now I have a nice line. Now, that line is going to be as thick as I make this. So I might have to adjust my line, but notice I can now make a line. And I can make the lines I want where I want them to make this chart look nice and neat. I can click off. I would advise again. Um, it's not going to let me because of that, but I would click on this. The good news is it's grouping this into here so that you can't move that. However, it does sometimes allow you to move things more than you would think. So I would make sure that everything's where I want it. I would line it up as best I could. Once I had the lines drawn and I was happy with it, click and drag and do that nice little grouping tool here with the squares in the box. And then you can make sure too, because this part was locked, it locks this part because it's grouped. And so now you have a chart. And what I was saying about the digits, text tool, I could type in a zero. I'd click off, click again for a new box, click a one. Do the same all the way through. Once I'm finished, click to my arrow. And I would simply put my digits along the bottom in order so they can find them easily. And with each one, I would go and I would make it a drag a copy. And so now you have a very functional tool. I'm going to close this out the way for a minute. There we go. And now you have a very functional flip chart where a child could come and say, well, if you tell me the number 21, there's nothing in the hundreds, there's a two in the tens, and there's a one in the ones. And so you have the ability to have kids come and show what it is that they know. One more I'm going to show you when you're building flip charts. One quick, easy way is if you have a diagram of something or a chart of something. So in this case, I'm going to do the continents. Any kind of picture or image that you can diagram, label, is another great quick way to make your own flip chart. If you don't find the image you want in your resource browser, go back to the web, find the, the picture in Google Images, and bring it in. If the picture is already labeled, easy. Take your pen, grab the color, color over it, and let the kids erase. Or you can come and use the shape tool, put the box over it, and then you could have the kids put it in the box, or you could put the words at the bottom and have them drag and drop to the box. You can switch it up different ways to make it so that the kids are able to go ahead and match things. So I'm going to drag this one. You'll notice a play button. So if I click this, this is already a flip chart page that's made doing something along the lines of what I was telling you that you can start dragging things in. If you don't like the way they word some of it, you could delete it and change it and make it what you want it to say. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip forward a page. And again, this is one like I was saying where you could take it in, fill it up best you can, make it like you want. So I'm going to teach you a really cool tool. For the paint bucket, if you come to a color on the grid here and you right click, Right click I showed you allows you to come in and change the color. This cool little eyedropper, if I click on color picker, you notice I have an eyedropper. And if I want to come to this Asia and I click on this, you notice it just changed this square to the exact same color. Let me tell you why that's great. So now I can take my pen, I can grab that one that's the exact same color, thicken up my line, and I just made the words for Asia and part of the water <laughs> disappear. So now you could tell the kids, okay, which one is that? Go check your answer. And they simply come in and erase. 
So I'm going to repeat that process for you again to show you how easy it is. Let's say I want the color for Europe and this color is not very good. I simply click on a color I'm willing to change by right clicking. I go to the color picker is what they call this. It looks like a little eyedropper. I click. It has now changed my color to the one I want. So I can come to my pen, grab that color, and I'm going to have to be a lot more careful in size with this one. And so I might have to scribble a little more, maybe go just a touch bigger. There's no um, set hard and fast rule, but you kind of play with it. And then I could color each of my continents. Simply right clicking, color picker tool, grab it over the color you want, pen, color, and write on over it. And so now I have something that the kids can write over. I could do it where they write over it. I also could take an image even if it's labeled and I could take a shape tool, grab that box. I might want a white interior to cover over the color. Black edge, keep it thin and I can draw a little box over this. Now if I'm doing boxes, I want to click that box. I want to go head in. I want to lock that box down so that they're not able to move it. And this is why I lock things and I'm showing you this. Just because the box is locked doesn't mean the rest is. Really, really important that you grab that background so it's all picked once you have it in size and in place and lock it down. Now they can't move anything on you. You then have the option to let them grab a pen and just jot in a name and they can jot it in. Obviously they'd want it much thinner. Or if you didn't want them to jot in the name because you have the sweethearts like me that are not very neat, Grab my eraser real quick and erase that out. You also have the option to come in, of course, do a text box, throw in a continent. We're going to do Asia. And I'm going to click out of here. And, of course, I might want to size my box, which, remember, would require the orange mode, or size the text whoops, so that it fits. Then you'd have to kind of change your box around to fit things the way you want. I also have the option, and probably the easiest way, it's kind of hard to see it up there, if I click on it so it's highlighted, I can resize it so that it's more likely to fit. I could make all my text boxes at the bottom and they could simply click and drag the word on into the top and they could check. And so those are things you can do. Don't forget you may need that edit mode at some point if you need to move things that are locked. Um, the other thing that sometimes people will do is they may choose to color over this. I've even seen people put this together just to make it easy to see. Um, they would drag and drop this, lock this together, or excuse me, group this together, which you can do with that button or through here, and then make it where the whole box would move over. And I didn't do a very good job of that. I missed, obviously. And they can then grab and drop it if it's moving together nicely, which it's not at the moment. Uh, it's grouped, so for some reason my grouping is not happy about me. Let's see. Oh, you know why? Because I locked that box. No, oh, not locked. Let's ungroup. And when you have a problem with a grouping, the best way is like that. Um, it's not grabbing that box very well. And that's going. what's my problem. So it has to be able to grab it, and that may be what it's giving me trouble on. And now we group. And now we can move it together. And then we have to bop into that other mode. And then you can start to move things, hopefully. So these are a couple of quick ways. I'm going to come back and just kind of review the, the kind of things we've looked at. Um, simple things like labeling. We looked at how to build things by clicking and dragging and dropping and dragging a copy, remembering to lock. So those are some very simple ways to lock down and build very simple lessons. And the truth is, the more you play with it, the faster you get. I know that's always a concern. Good luck, and let me know if you need any help.